Hello and welcome to part two of my how to make a weighted companion cube uh, tutorial. Um, in this part we're going to go ahead and uh, use booleans to uh, give that circular look. Um, if you look at the images you'll see that it has a circular look to it or that circular cut. So we'll go ahead and add that and we're also going to uh, add this angle in um, and most likely bring in one of these sides and you know, see how time looks uh, about you know within the 10 minute window for YouTube so let's uh, let's get going um, where we left off we had all the cubes made on all the corners and all these on the edges so now go ahead and shift select every single external cube careful not to select any in the center we do not want any of those highlighted so go ahead and highlight all those um, and uh, click the uh, combine button now I have a macro for it up here but if you do not just simply go up to mesh and click combine that combines them all together so if you were to apply a color onto one of these squares it'll go to all of them um, which isn't a bad thing because in the end it's all going to be the same color anyways and it also makes this next step for booleans a whole lot simpler so with that highlighted go ahead and click control H ah never mind go ahead and click alt H and hide everything else but our uh, external cubes so from here, go ahead and uh, create yourself a polygon cylinder. Now it doesn't matter what your presets for it are. Um, I'll go ahead and help you with that. Um, you click on the inputs for it. Now since we're not going to be using smooth mesh, um, we want to make these uh, make the sides as smooth as possible. So go ahead and on divisions axis, go ahead and uh, knock that up to a hundred. Give it a nice smoother look. Hit R for scale and start to bring it out and where you want it to go is just inside uh, this line or just inside uh, this area right here. So I bring it in and that's exactly where I want it right there. So go into side view scale it upwards so it comes out past all the edges. Um, go back into uh, this view <laughs> and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to freeze trans well actually before we freeze transformations you'll see we have a bunch of different subdivisions um, that could cause us a problem uh, with one of our next steps so we want to get rid of that go ahead and click on subdivisions height uh, middle mouse click and move it over to the left just to make that number drop down or just manually click there and click one uh, we don't want any lines in here um, with that being done go ahead and uh, click it again uh, and freeze transformations now if you don't have the macro there again just go up to modify and there's freeze transformations that resets everything to zero like that's where this piece was born uh, if you move it, all you have to do is go up here and hit zero, and it goes right back to where it belongs. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to pull that out, and with it still highlighted, select Control D for duplicate. Now it'll automatically select uh, the duplicated piece. So if you go to Translate X or whatever direction you pulled it out of, go ahead and hit zero and enter on the keyboard and it'll bring it right back to the dead center here now from here click the cubes shift select the cylinder go up to mesh go down to booleans now before you click anything just click the two lines on top and it'll bring the menu out here since we're going to do it three different times it's uh, very repetitive to go up and just click it like that so this makes it a lot easier so with those selected cubes first, hold shift, click the cylinder, select difference. And you'll see we got a nice little hole there. Um, 
click on the cylinder again, control D for duplicate. Same thing as we did before, zero, bring it in. This time hit your rotate tool and on either axis here, Z or X, it doesn't matter. Um, what we want to do is go to one or the other. So I'll just go that way. I see I'm going toward the 90 degree area, um, and negative, so I'll just go negative 90, hit enter, and there it is. So we're going to shift select just like we did with the first piece, click difference. Now with this one, we're not going to duplicate it because we only need one more, so why duplicate it? Let's just get rid of it. Zero again, go on the last axis, 90 degrees, shift select, difference, and there you go. We have everything uh, the way we want it thus far. And uh, like I was saying with the cylinder, if we kept the subdivisions in, um, it would leave some unwanted lines um, in different directions where we wouldn't want it. It's better for it to just be one long smooth line. Um, Alright, so go ahead and right click and go to vertex. It'll highlight all the vert, uh, vertices of the object. Um, this is uh, the part where it might take a minute or so, but you know, bear with me. Go ahead and click uh, a center point of any corner cube. Hold Shift, double click the next one next to it, and do that in all directions. While still holding Shift, well, you don't have to hold it to move around, but before you click the next point, make sure you hold shift because you want to highlight all of these so click one click the one right next to it and it'll just highlight those in a row same here double click double click double click and just do that all the way around now there may be some dead silence here for a minute because I really don't have anything else to talk about while I'm doing this um... yeah so uh... Let's go ahead and just click on all those. Yeah, what fun we're having. No, really, actually, this is fun. It's good times right here. Alright, almost done here. This has to be the most time consuming process of this whole thing, but. Um, I actually almost did not want to do this when I first made the cube because I didn't know how to really do it uh, to get those angles. But uh, this is, at least for me, this is the best way that I've found to do it. So if anyone out there watches this and sees a better way to do it, go for it. Whatever works for you. I'm just here to try to give a little push. Okay, with all those highlighted. Do a double check because you want to make sure they're all highlighted. And it uh, looks like I got them all. So with all that done, go ahead and hit R for scale. Now go to display, show last hidden. It'll bring the cubes back, which is what we want. Go ahead and left click on the center of the scale tool and bring it in you'll see it'll start bringing those inward. Uh, bring it to wherever you think it'd be nice, bring it in. I'll just go with that. Looks nice. Um, go back into object mode and there you go. We're just about finished with the model itself. So let's go ahead and create a polygon cylinder again. Now with this um, we're going to translate it on Z to 4.929 and hit enter. Bring it up right here in front. Then we're also going to rotate it 90 degrees on X. And we're going to flatten it out. Um, when it comes to the subdivisions for it, um, it has five. Uh, five is a good number to keep it at because this we will end up smoothing out. Um, but uh, we'll get to that in a moment. Um, 
scale it in to about 4.2, I want to say. Let's go right there. And then bring it out the rest of the way. Actually, we'll just type these in. Uh, scale X, hold control, and then go to scale Z. Type in a 2.776. Hit enter. Now that's what we're looking for right there. If you hit 3, it'll go into smooth mesh. And that's where we're going to put our heart um, that we do in the uh, next video um, in Photoshop to, uh, yeah, just we'll do the UV map, import that into Photoshop, and throw that on there, duplicate that around a few times, and uh, then we'll go into rendering. Uh, not too much longer, and uh, s stay tuned.